just like kind of holding steady now at 40, it feels like it's increasing. And yeah, I don't know, it's a bit scary to be honest. Previously on Delos, we continued sailing towards Madagascar and had the best fishing of our lives. The weather's calmed down, the swells are down, the wind is just above 10 knots, and we're about 360 miles away from Madagascar. So we're here, and we're just about ready to make our turn now, and since the wind is, is out of the east, we need to put up the downwind sail so that when we turn, it's directly behind us, and then we'll just take this line straight to the north tip of Madagascar. Thought of the day, go. We are, we only have one uh, packet of pasta left, we're gonna eat it tonight. And then my thought is, is it gonna be a wraps every day for the whole trip? Okay. Gross. Thought of the day. Boom, go. I'm craving a wood fight pizza, I've been thinking about it for four days. <laughs> what say you? What say you, thought of the day? Oh, Princess Bride? Oh, what no. movie is it from? Oh, that's... What you what's your thought of the day? Monkeys in Madagascar. So we're going to be back in civilization in a few weeks. So my thought of the day is... Imagine how it's going to be to walk on a road that never ends. Meaning you're not on an island so you don't have to walk in a circle like I can literally step out on the street and just walk one direction and it's never gonna end if I don't want it to <laughs> And also second thought that was my first thought that when I woke up this morning because Brady told me a story yesterday that before he went sailing He had a snake called scooter that he gave to his friend Ed and my thought this morning was <laughs> Is that snake still alive? And if so, where is Scooter right now? We're gonna find out. I'm gonna send it. I'm gonna send Ed an email. <laughs> where is Scooter right now? <gasps> You're gonna send an email to Ed? We'll find out if, sna if my snake is still alive. Where are you, Scooter? Mush rat! Wow! We've got okay. some, <laughs> something special today for everyone. Guys, it's a treat. <laughs> It's one of those rare occasions oh, yeah. to just hoping for when you wake up in the morning. And I think having long hair and sailing in the tropics is <laughs> fucking stupid. <laughs> it's terrible. And the beard as well. Like it's just uh, your, why? your head is covered with hair. Like you know how easy it would be just to cut it? Why the f do I have long hair? Yeah, look at Max. He's such a happy guy right now. I'm Honestly. I'm jealous. Look, look how free he looks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, he's so happy. I know. I can see the change. He doesn't change. have to like do this or fucking anything. What? Huh? What? What you talking about? I was admiring your head. It has less hair than mine. 
So Brady, why do you then do this? Like, why do you? I don't know. Well, okay, number one is because of Yusha. She wanted me to grow my hair out again because she met me when I had long hair. Yeah? Yeah. But she's out. So yeah. fucking... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, chop, because, chop, bitches. Because that's what Max said. He was like, why do I do this to myself? And he was like, I don't have to. So then he just decided. Yeah. Perhaps you should just do it. Yeah. You'll feel like a new man. Yeah. Less hot, you know? Yeah. It's not like you're going to be in winter anytime soon. Yeah. Sleep on it. I'm going to sleep on it. <laughs> How's it going, Yash? Yeah, it's yeah. good. I think we're like 230 miles from the Cape. But it looks really nasty up ahead and the wind's sort of picked up and stuff, so I think we're going to start seeing some bad weather soon. So we're like 200 miles away from the Cape of Matty and the swells are getting bigger and the wind is picking up which we kind of expected but it looks like it's going to be a, a little bit worse than what what we thought it was going to be really yes yes okay so we should be seeing 15 or 16 knots but out of more southeast and the wind's coming more out of the south which kind of fucks us because we, we, de we don't want to be coming at the Cape like this. So 24 hours from now, Ooh. that... Which <laughs> so we're going to be like, we're gonna sail. maybe like 50 miles away from the Cape by then. We're going to be like there. At, th at this speed, we'll be, yeah, we'll be like Probably here. Probably there, yeah. yeah. And, and that's what's that? 30s. Well, Red. So this, the, and this, this grib is always lower too. Like the wind, it'll say 10, but it'll be blowing 15 or 20. So this one shows. 30, 30. Like 40, it's probably 40 or 45. It is what it is. We just have to, we just have to make sure we don't go north of our course. Yeah, I know. That's the most important thing. At least we'll have good speed if it's 40 knots. Yeah. <laughs> we'll look in there. The northern cape of Madagascar has notoriously rough waters. Our course was crucial. Too far south, and we'd hit current against 40 knots of wind, causing huge standing waves. Too far north, and we'd encounter even stronger winds and be blown away from Madagascar towards the Seychelles. We needed to get all hands on deck and set Dulles up for what was shaping up to be one hell of a night. I think we are sailing into a dark cloud and since it's blowing 20-30 knots already I'm a bit don't know what's gonna happen next. Soon we'll be there. It's actually really easy to drive, like the helm's really balanced now. It's pretty cool, like we've got 30 knots of breeze and there's big waves, but we reef down the second reefs and it's kind of hands off it just steers itself almost really sweet look at that don't even need the autopilot it's cruising i like the caribbean blaster super sailmakers did a good job yeah and we're getting moved around a lot but it's not it's not terrible yeah. oh it's comfortable it's not rolling and it's probably going to be like this for another 24 hours I think it's going to be like this all the way until the cape we get around it. And, uh, it might even come up a little bit. I think we're seeing this a little earlier than we should have.
this is behind the scenes. I'm trying to stand still in the bathroom when we're sailing. It's very difficult. It's like 30 knots of wind outside and so you can see my feet, they have to put one foot there, the other foot there, so you have a stable kind of <laughs> grip. I will rarely uh, shower on passage that much because it's really hard. Um, but this is kind of what it what it's like. You hold also hold on to here. <laughs> Woohoo! Um, then the situation with the bathroom is that you sit down and I place one foot there and the other one here. And then you can do your business. And at night, like it's black here, like you can't see shit. So you just have to sort of feel wherever you go, like I've, I've, I know every inch where every corner so you don't, like in the beginning I used to have like a lot of pain everywhere because I just bumped into things and shit but now you just, you've learned to guide yourself in the dark. That's all for this behind, up, behind the scenes tells. Okay. Bubs is sleeping. More Karen is cooking. More of this. Six. And outside. I get like five days. What's going on out here? If this is the first seat. Craziness. Yeah. Enjoying the ride. I feel a bit sick actually. I've been laying up in the bay berth and watching a movie and taking naps. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Drinking. So we got 30-35 knots of wind. It's gnarly. Really gnarly. Really hard to keep it on course too. Because it really wants to go into the wind. Big wind. It's fun. That was a gust almost a 40 there. Yeah. It's a constant 30 knots though. Yeah it is. Toe generator and the wind generator are just cranking in power. Karen, the sailor ninja. It's really hard to catch. Oh my god. <laughs> You're like in a freaking squatting position. Holding a knife. Yep. Going fish. Plus trying to organize this, who doesn't fly all over the place? Yeah, maybe just wait a little bit and see what happens. So, we still have around 30, sometimes 40 knots of wind. It's pretty crazy big waves just slamming over the boat. And it's interesting, it's it's almost like coming into Coco Skiing, but yeah, it's pretty gnarly for sure. We got really splashed a few times, like big waves just hitting the boat. So but we do doing good. We're on course and we're holding good speed, so yeah, all's good. Everyone's resting inside, and as you can hear, the wind is very, very strong out here. Um, and the, I don't like when the boats sort of surf up a wave and boom, like hit the ocean. You can just hear all the power, you know, like it's really, it's not nice. Dallas is a really strong boat though, so I'm happy. I, I'm happy to be out here with her and not on something else. But it's really scary. I'm. 
it's always scary. I don't like to be in big squalls like this, but I know it's going to be fine and we'll be in Madagascar tomorrow um, evening. We'll see land tomorrow afternoon, so that's going to be really exciting. But we just um, keep positive thoughts and keep us warm and we'll be there soon. Been on watch now for about an hour and it's been consistently blowing between 30 and 40 knots and we are hooning along and it's actually kind of scary I think it's the first time on this trip that I've actually felt kind of afraid um, it's just the combination of like there's absolutely no moon out or if there is it's behind a bunch of clouds so it's like completely dark so you can't even really see where the horizon is and differentiate between the ocean and the sky so we're driving solely by the compass and the autopilot what it's telling us there so it's kind of hard to predict when we're being headed and, and not so it's a bit scary to drive and especially because we're kind of approaching the, the north part of Madagascar which is apparently meant to be pretty rough and I think we're going to be seeing some heavier winds probably tomorrow, at least that's what the what Predict Wind is telling us anyway, but yeah, it's approaching midnight and there's been some freak waves, some scary freak waves that just come crashing over the boat, we're just slamming into waves and it's not nice, it is a blowing. Anyways, did he get back to hand steering? Shit! What's going on up here? Nolly, nolly wind. It's like kind of holding steady now at 40. It feels like it's increasing. And yeah, I don't know. It's a bit scary to be honest. never seen that before. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly. It's like sustained 40 knots pretty much. I think mean, Ray said he saw 48 knots. It's the highest we've seen tonight, which is pretty significant wind. And we've got just a tiny scrap of headsail out. Main's fully down, mizzen's fully down, and we're still doing seven knots, but it feels the boat feels under control. And you can drive and Alright. What do you think, Ray? Yeah, the boat's handling really, really well. Just a little, little piece of jib out and nothing else right now. And the breeze is pretty much right on our beam, which is fucking sweet. Would hate to be going upwind in this. But yeah, every once in a while, a massive freak wave comes and just crashes into that window and scares the shit out of me. <laughs> it's scary, eh? It's really scary. The whole boat gets knocked down. There was a big one that came across the back, too. It hit that side and went all the way across the back. The scuba tanks were completely underwater. It just... <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, fuck, man. Yeah. I'm glad we're ever... Ain't no joke. Yeah, it's no joke. Uh, we got another 
eight hours until daylight, and then we can just see how big these waves are. Yeah. It's hard to tell right now. But I think you're right, Bri, when you see them, like, when they pass After us. After they pass you, you can just see them. Yeah, like the backs of them. The camera never shows them, though, you know? Yeah, I know. I was going to feel the depth. They're big. We They're significant, you. though. And then it got really shitty. Our old analog wind instruments top out at 50 knots, and there were periods when it was pegged. Our best guess is sustained 45 knots, gusting well into the 50 knot range for periods, which classifies it as a Force 9 severe gale. This means wave heights from 7 to 10 meters, or 20 to 30 feet about as high as a three-story building. It was intense. For the first time in over 50,000 miles of ocean sailing, we were forced to close the companionway hatch to avoid taking water into the cabin. Waves were crashing onto Delos on a regular basis and filling the cockpit with water. I'd never, ever seen that before. Brady and I took 30-minute shifts hand steering down the waves. We asked everyone else to stay below in their bunks while we were clipped into the cockpit. Dallas was getting knocked around pretty badly. You could hear the rumbling of the waves all around. Sometimes they'd pass by, or we'd ride the crest of a breaking wave like a roller coaster. Other times they would knock us on our ass. It was completely unpredictable. The crashing waves combined with the howling wind created the most awesome noise I'd ever experienced. It was so loud, you could feel the raw power of nature all around you. It's uh, 7 a.m. now. So, Brian and I have been taking turns hand steering on and off every 30 minutes since about midnight. And it's still pretty gnarly, like still blowing 40, 45 and we've seen gusts at 50, but we're only about 60 miles from the head of the Cape, so we're cruising along at like 8 knots. So we'll be there soon, and then, I don't know what that means, but that's what we kept saying, we'll be at the Cape. We can turn more downwind and then round the Cape, and then hopefully there's no wind on the other side. I'm fucking tired, man. Gnarly. Gnarly swells. Yeah, it's really scary. Gnarly. Man. No, I'm like, Ugh. You just fucking hear them coming like that. And you don't know they if they're gonna crash hit or not. through the cockpit window. Yeah. I hate that. The sun's gonna come up soon. I don't know if I want it to. I don't really want to see what's around us. Yeah. Up next, it's a bright and sunny day after our crazy night. It's mountains of water moving by. And we let loose after arriving in Madagascar.
Look at that. How yeah, long have you been wearing those underwear, bro? <laughs> I wore them. So I wore them on the inside for four days, and then I flipped them, and I'm wearing this one for four days. It's it disgusting. Here. No, they're good, bro. I'm clean. I've still showered.